Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and this is Frank Clay, curator for Battleship Missouri. Today we're going to be talking about a friendly fire incident on Missouri. Despite all of their armor, Iowa-class battleships were rarely damaged and were more likely to be damaged by the ships they were operating with than by enemy vessels. On New Jersey, we are damaged one time by enemy fire, uh, and there is the slightest evidence of that on the face of turret one, where a broken ladder had to be moved about a quarter inch to the side. And if you visit New Jersey, you can see those weld marks where the damaged ladder was removed. Uh, we were also damaged by friendly fire at one point in uh, 1944, when a ship doing anti-aircraft training um, fired a shell that didn't fuse properly and dropped through the deck on the fantail, unfortunately now covered by the flight deck, uh, through what is now the ship's library. You can still see a patch in the overhead where they welded over it, uh, through the deck, which is unfortunately covered by tile now and you can't see, into a wash basin in the crew's head on the starboard side on third deck. Um, but Frank is here to tell us about the damage that Missouri took. During the Persian Gulf War, uh, there was an incident uh, where there was uh, missiles inbound, potentially, and uh, the Missouri uh, activated chaff launchers. And uh, what happened was is the frigate, the USS Jarrett, um, had her sea whiz on automatic. So basically, once we launched our chaff, uh, their sea whiz locked onto our chaff cloud and lit us up and put about a half a dozen sea whiz rounds into the sides of the ship. Uh, a couple of them went into the smokestacks, superficial damage, but one of them, uh, we can still see the damage here on the O1 level. Um, it went through the exterior uh, skin of the ship. It went in through uh, interior bulkhead, a couple of interior bulkheads right over the officer's urinal. Over here on right outside here, uh, through this uh, ventilation pipe here, uh, broke a water pipe over against that bulkhead and finally lodged in that armored bulkhead over there and that's basically what stopped it. Um, there there were reports of you know damage damage reports coming in flooding on the one level which really confused everyone because where did we get hit? What was going on? Uh, it was a really really confusing incident. There was one crewman in the area who was wounded by some shrapnel as a result of this. Uh, he applied for a Purple Heart and was denied, apparently. Um, so, uh, but overall, we kind of got away with the one. We got, got, kind of got lucky on that one because it really could have been bad um, because Missouri really didn't have any notice uh, about this. People weren't really able to shelter properly yet because of the suddenness of this missile inbound incident. It's really interesting to me that the round doesn't deflect at all. I think of a 20 millimeter round as not being that uh, significant. It does go through the outer skin of the ship and through several bulkheads in a straight line without appearing to tumble or uh, divert because it's that di uh, depleted uranium uh, round for stopping an incoming missile. Yeah, and apparently the slug was lodged in the bulkhead and the damage, report, uh, damage control teams came in had to remove it, basically. Someone kept it, and at one point I understand um, Captain Case had to put coffee cans around the ship for like an honor system of uh, if you have depleted uranium stuff, uh, please put it in the cans. No questions asked. This is for your and everyone else's safety uh, to basically reclaim any depleted uranium related sea whiz things that may have made its rounds amongst the crew. Uh, not only from this incident, incident, but from other things that happened during the Gulf. Uh, so they were feared that it was hazardous to people's health and then probably disposed of it if it was turned in at all? I imagine it was properly disposed of at that point once it was collected. Yeah, so uh, worth mentioning that ships have identification friend or foe transponders on board. So that's what the Sea Whiz can tell. Oh, this is an American ship signal. We don't want to shoot at that. But a cloud of chaff does not have any identifier, so it sees that as a viable target. I'm sneakily jumping in. Uh, Megan, <laughs> previous curator here, current executive director of Battleship Cove. This was not the first time that Missouri was hit by another ship's uh, essentially smaller rounds. Uh, World War II, um, Wisconsin and Missouri were sailing together and a plane went in between them and Wisconsin's gutters didn't stop firing and 
actually hit Missouri and hit a crew member and hit him in the stomach, I believe with a 20 mil, and he survived it, was okay. They patched him up, and he uh, was out um, up high on the weather decks during GQ, and then after that point, they nicely put him inside the ship and did not make him go to GQ and on any exterior stations again. But um, for some reason, Missouri just has a habit of getting shot at by the ships and her battle groups. So uh, It's quite common for sisters to fight each other. The only ship that could take down Mizora is another Iowa-class battleship. Are you surprised that they didn't expend the energy to patch the various holes as it goes through the bulkheads here? Or do you think, yeah, it's small enough that, uh, hey, we've got a new air conditioning hole there? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below to Battleship Mizora's uh, social media pages and donate page if you'd like to support their operations here in Honolulu. You can also support New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.